deep dive uh, into sati. So let's talk about sati from the three perspectives, right? There are three things that when we practice sati, we need to consider. Now, usually uh, the, the normal term applied to sati is awareness, to be aware. But what, is the, what does that mean? Because being aware can be pretty vague. Well, aware of what? Well, if we go to the Satipatthana uh, discourse, right, there are three things. Now, one is aware of the in and out breathing, right, the in and out breathing or breath. Then there's the four parameters, right? So one is aware of body, one is aware of feelings, one is aware of mind or chitta, and one is aware of dharmas or phenomena in this case, right? So when we do this analyzation, it's, it's to be aware that like uh, there is a body, right? And you can go deeper into the analyzation or you can just sit there being completely aware that there is a body. Same with feelings. We be completely aware that there's feelings. We can be completely aware that there's mind and that we be uh, completely aware that there's phenomena, that there's phenomena, right? And the third part of sati is to abide, uh, not clinging to anything in the world. Now, this is what I think is one of the things that get left out all the time. When we talk about sati, we talk about being aware. We, don't, we, we always miss the fact that part of sati is not clinging to anything in the world. Like you just don't cling to anything, right? So you, we we understand by default that nothing can be controlled uh, personally or externally, right? In terms of the body, we can't control it because it, it, it ages, it gets sick and it dies when, it, when, it's, when it's ready, when it's good and ready to do so. It gets sick when it wants to and it ages and we've got no control over that. Feelings are the same. Pleasant feelings, uh, unpleasant feelings, neutral feelings, they come and go, they come and go by themselves. They're built into the framework of the human being. Mind, now that's an interesting one. Chitta, chitta being not self, right? So there is chitta, but it's not self. It doesn't really have an identity. It's just mind, mind in itself, right? And certainly phenomena, phenomena is certainly something that uh, we don't have control of, like the rain, the sun, the moon, uh, the wind, right? Earthquakes, uh, what other people do, etc. Animals, everything, right? But the abide, uh, not clinging to anything in the world is a really, really important aspect of sati, right? So when we, when we sit down in concentration, the sati is like the, the, the base awareness where you're just not clinging to anything, right? So that's sati, right? Now the question that I'm trying to answer is what's the difference between sati and vipassana? Because sati can be vipassana as well, because it, you can, vipassana um, is an analyzation, right? It's investigating. So you can still be in sati and you can still practice vipassana. So in other words, in sati, the, the base is like the guard. We're always aware that there's a body and there's, there's the four parameters, but we're also, and we're aware of the breathing, we're also aware that we're not abiding, um, clinging to anything in the world. So that's the base. Now, when we investigate something like any topic, for example, you might want to uh, investigate the impermanence, the impermanence of uh, perceptions, right? You can still ha uh, practice sati. You can still be in sati. You could still be practicing sati meditation when you're sitting down to concentrate or when you're doing walking meditation or you're lying down or you're sit or you're um, standing you can still be uh, uh, have, you could still have sati right you could still be practicing the non clinging and still be investigating and still be analyzing things right so this is the the difference between vipassana and sati although at some point they you know most of these practices do cross over at some point once a certain level of, uh, I guess, mastery or a certain level of proficiency has reached, they all, you know, it all kind of comes together because the goal is what we're trying to get to is, is the total destruction of ignorance, right? The destruction of craving, 
right? We're trying to get to the cessation, right? Cessation is the more correct term, dukkha nirodo, right? Uh, the, 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 the cessation of dukkha is our final aim. It's, it's what we're trying to get to. So once that occurs, then none of this applies anymore, right? Because the freedom, the, the target has been um, achieved, right? Has been realized. So when I talked about samatha and vipassana, that's strictly when you're in concentration mode, when you're practicing uh, samadhi, when you're trying to get into jhana or trying to um, analyze and trying to uh, investigate qualities, you're trying to investigate uh, the universe, you're trying to investigate nature. Vipassana and samatha are, pr are pretty much the base, of the, two, the two strands of it. They're, they're, there's perhaps other things that I'm not really aware of, but in any case, um, the idea is to go deep into the steadiness, right, which is more samadhi concentration, which is more the samatha type. And then once the mind has uh, engulfed itself, it's become harnessed, it's become concentrated, it's become almost one-pointed, it's not distracted. At this point, you enter vipassana kamatana or vipassana, the, the vipassana way and start to analyze because the mind is really concentrated, right? But the sati is always there in the background. So we're always being, uh, we're always abiding, not clinging to anything in the world. Because even jhana is impermanent, right? Even some, uh, samadhi is impermanent. So in other words, there are deep states of concentrations, but we also come out of these deep states of concentration. When we come out of these deep concentration um, states, uh, when we're sitting in practice, then we re revert quickly back to, we, we go back to the fundamental of sati and we're aware that there is a body, there are feelings, there is citta, there is mind, there is phenomena and we're aware of the uh, in and out breath and we're aware that we're, not, we're abiding, not clinging to anything in the world. Now, once we enter the state of samadhi again where we become one-pointed and, and we just concentrate on in and out breathing, then the the base sati is still there we're still being aware that there's body and the four parameters we're still not clinging but now we're choosing to direct the mind into one object right and we're trying to and we're and we're and we're being clear about entering samadhi we're practicing samadhi now where we and sati is always there now when we exit the meditation experience the practice of meditation or concentration and we go about our daily duties Sati is not dislodged at this point. Sati is still maintained. In other words, we're still aware um, that, that we're breathing, that, that there's breath, that there is body, that there's feelings, the mind, and there's phenomena. And we're still being aware um, that we're abiding, aware of we're abiding and not clinging to anything in the world, right? So that's the main point of Sati, is, and that's why we talk about 24-hour uh, Sati, is that one can not cling to anything in the world for 24 hours a day, right? As opposed to vipassana, which is an investigation technique, right? During concentration, when we're trying to investigate subjects or improve the wisdom. Now, sati, the sati, uh, a lot of the teachers that I've heard talk um, in this tradition talk about sati and wisdom, awareness and wisdom being opposite sides of the coin, different sides of the coin, the two sides. So. Sati turns into wisdom, wisdom turns into sati. They kind of merge because as your awareness grows and grows and grows and grows and more you realize that uh, the body is not self that uh, and you, we're not clinging, right? And that there's this apparatus that we're in is, is just phenomena. It's just basically a sankara born of ignorance, right? We're not clinging to it uh, through there we get a lot of insights. Now, when the concentration is very strong and well-developed, and when the sati is very strong and well-developed, we go into a phase called maha sati and maha samadhi. So great awareness and great concentration. And from there, that's, from there, that's, that's, that's the aim, like to, to get into great awareness and to get into great concentration. For, and there, hopefully, it, we realize the cessation of dukkha. Now, that's the point. Um, that's where the wisdom comes from. Now, of course, without uh, mixing all the other factors in this, in this talk, of course you need all the other factors uh, in line with the sati, with the awareness and the samadhi. But 
if you practice sati correctly, that is in line with right view because you're still being aware by not clinging to anything in the world. You're still uh, understanding that there is the anicca dukkham anatta, uh, the tilakana, um, uh, the tilakana dharma uh, in effect, right? So this is very important to understand the differences between sati and vipassana.